Fabric Cobble Garage. In today's video, we're going to show you how to do the front wheel bearings on uh, 1988 Honda Four Tracks. Now, this is particular for this bike, but you can use these same exact principles for pretty much any four wheelers. Uh, first off, I'm going to show you how to know whenever you need to do your wheel bearings. Now, there's a couple of different things you can check. Right now I got the wheels off the ground so that they're not the like stuck as they are. Now you can see if I move the side to side motion, you can tell there's play from the steering wheel. Now that's the tie rod ends, which this does need tie rods, which we will end up doing a video on that eventually. Uh, but the way you check for your wheel bearings is you grab the top and bottom and you try to pull and push. And if you hear that clunking noise, that's the play in your, uh, that's the play in your wheel bearings. And you can feel it. And when I got the four wheeler, I think I, I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, but the guy said he had done them, which he did, but he didn't do it correctly. The other side was way worse and I replaced it and I thought this was, side was salvageable, but it is not. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna just show you that process. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the wheel off, uh, 17 millimeter nut. We'll just use the impact real quick. Now, basically, to replace the wheel bearing, what you're going to do is, is you're going to need to take off this axle nut, and then once you get the axle nut off, you need to undo your ball joints and your tie rod in. Uh, for the most part, if you have a press, now we're going to see if. I'm going to see if we can try to do it without taking it all apart, uh, but at the very least you need to get the CV axle out of the way to be able to do it. So we'll take out this cotter pin, and then we'll take out the axle nut, and then we'll take out the, uh, we'll take out the ball joints and go from there. So as you can see, we got it all apart. Um, this here is your knuckle. Now, as you can tell, there are no brake shoes in here. Normally, this now this is a drum setup, as you can tell with the drum. Uh, normally, there's two shoes right here, and there's not this four wheeler does not have any brakes, and that's most of the reason why, as well as the the brake handle was removed, uh, which we're not really going to worry about that. Uh, 
So as you saw, uh, when I went to remove the, or as you might've seen, to get the cotter pins out, let me get one for you. Now these cotter pins here are gonna be in the, focus. They're gonna be in little holes in the stud. Now that keeps it from backing out. The best way to grab onto these is whenever they're in the stud, so like this one, Now, they're, when they're actually in the castle nut and bent over, the best way is to get some side cutters or dikes or whatever you call them. And what you're going to do is, is grab onto it at the back and don't squeeze too hard to cut it, but just grab onto it and then just twist, like pull up against it. And that pulls them out really easily with that cutting edge on there what it does is it grabs it really good and if they're stuck bad enough which you're really not supposed to reuse cotter pins but we're just gonna do with what we have here uh, if they're bad enough then you already have the dikes so you can just cut it uh, this CV joint is bad the boots all messed up and it's ripped and it's binding um, you can, if it's not too far gone, you can actually replace these boots, which we might see about doing that, and then just repacking it with grease, and hopefully everything will be good. Uh, but we'll just wait on that. Now, once you got it all apart, oh, also, uh, for your, as you notice, I used the air impact. You don't need to, it does make it a lot easier though but whenever you're doing this the tie rod in on this top it actually has all these nuts are 17 millimeter nuts it also has a groove to put a wrench as you saw now for the rest of these what you're going to want to do which they also have play in them and we will be uh, changing them out eventually but for now we're just going to leave it uh, but what you want to do is is if you do break it loose make sure because you might not have been able to tell when I was taking the bottom one off it started to free spin but if you push because if you kind of look you can kind of see it's tapered and that's how it stays in there is that taper if you push back down on it then it stays snug again and you can loosen it the rest of the way and for stubborn ones you get it's called a pickle fork and you can separate it that way you can also put pressure on the knuckle and hit on the side right here and that'll usually break them free or no not there uh you'd hit it here and that will also break it free if you don't have a pickle fork if you only have a pry bar that works just fine too but now that we got the knuckle off all we're gonna do is is we got our two on the inside and outside we got our two seals we're going to take those off with a flathead and then there is a uh, reverse e-clip or a jesus clip or whatever you want to call them we'll take that out and that should be on this side and then we'll hammer it out and then hammer the new one in and i'll show you that Alrighty, so as you can see, we got the wheel bearing and those uh, seals in pretty easily. It's not, doesn't take a whole lot. Having a mini sledge definitely helps because the weight 
uh, but you can use just a regular ball peen or regular hammer just the same now like I was trying to say or was trying to show here's the old one for example when you're beating them out it doesn't matter because they're already old and messed up but like I said before you want to make sure to hammer on this outside ring so you I got some uh, some axle nut sockets which work really good this is the one I used to to get it out but this one right here as you can tell it sits right on the outside of that ring just perfect and you can also use old if you have done enough you can use old wheel bearings there's also a kit specifically it's these aluminum uh which the aluminum is softer and it helps not damage stuff that's different sizes specifically for doing it if you want to go that route as well and like I was trying to show you, when you put these little seals on, these little lip things, you just want that on the outside so that the, the because what it is, even though this is rubber, there's an aluminum ring in there that holds it solid. And you just want to just kind of gently tap on it, even though, like I said, I was still using the mini sledge, but just gently tap on it. You, it won't mess up this little lip here. And it'll go on just fine. You see, you can't get them wrong. One's bigger than the other. So then what we'll do from here is we'll go ahead and put it back on. Uh, a trick, just the same thing like I was saying when taking it off, is pushing down on it to get it to come loose. You do just the same thing with tightening it. And I'm sure, just like everything, there's a torque spec, but we're just going to get it tight. And then we'll get the cotter pin in and on these see this is this one's here is the uh, tie rod nut but it's not crowned this is the axle nut it's crowned but like the wheel bearing nuts or the ball joint nuts uh, they're crowned and what this does is the cotter pin goes through the crown of these slots now when you do this Anytime, like if one of these slots doesn't line up, but if you loosen it, it will line up. Don't loosen it. You always just want to get them tighter. So if it just needs to be tightened more, then do that instead. Now, with this top one with the knuckle in the way, you have to use a wrench and you can still use it pretty easily. It's not too bad. Uh, a good trick to getting it tighter if you can't push anymore or if like it's trying to slip and even pushing down isn't helping a good trick is getting a little hammer and then just hitting the wrench because all your impact is is if you think of it as like a wrench and you're just hitting the end of it that's all it is so that's a good trick for that so we'll get it back together real quick and uh that'll pretty much be it for this one so we went ahead and got it put back together Putting it back together is just the opposite of when we took it apart. So there's really nothing special there. So if you like the video, drop a like. If you have any questions or if there's something I really didn't go over, then uh, leave a comment. And if you like the channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep updated on the videos. And check out the other videos while you're at it. And we will see you all in the next one.